Today we will recap the story of the Sea Beast from 2022. Maisie is in yet another one of her nightly storytelling to her friends in the orphanage room. It recounts the entire journey of the great sea monster hunters who bravely fought and protected the vessels. But she ends up being interrupted by the caretaker who orders everyone to lie down to sleep, as it was past time. Maisie just waits for the woman to leave so she can get her adventure gear and then with the help of a wardrobe she manages to climb to the window and set off on another journey that night. The next day, aboard the ship Inevitable, the sailor Jacob is informed that a monstrous creature has been seen a few kilometers ahead. The ship's captain claims it's definitely the Red Bluster, the monster that ripped out one of his eyes. They then spot Jim Nicklebone's ship being brutally attacked by another Brickleback-type creature. Even though the captain couldn't pass up the opportunity to catch the Red Bluster, he followed Jacob's advice and changed course to help the Nicklebone ship. Amid a dense fog, the crew was being slaughtered by the monster, but when the inevitable ship enters the combat zone, it fires a flare to draw the animal's attention. And now it was time to fight him. Jacob and his hunting sailors hang from ropes on the side of the ship. The captain gives the order, and the cannons fire relentlessly, followed by several arrows. The creature decides to dive in, but Jacob quickly climbs the sail and throws a harpoon with a sort of locating buoy. Now they won't let her out of their sight. But the sailor noticed that there were no birds flying around the buoy, and the seagulls appeared on top of them which means that the animal was already below the vessel. The monster leaps out of the water and topples the ship on its side, flinging part of the tribulation into the water. It starts capturing the sailors with its tentacles. The captain bravely tries to resist along with Sarah. Jacob then observes all the chaos around him and tries to help one by one of his companions. He runs around dodging the tentacle attacks and hurls a harpoon at the monster's head, which finally releases the vessel and sinks again. When Jacob thought everything was right, he takes a violent blow from a tentacle and flies off into the water. The creature tries in every way to swallow him, but the sailor swims with all his might. He ends up being thrown on the monster's back and gets stuck in its carapace. Jacob takes advantage and plunges his knife into the animal's back, which gets up and exposes its chest to the boat. The captain runs at the monster and jumps towards it, spearing the spear right in its vital point, finally eliminating the creature. He saws off part of its horn as a combat trophy, but didn't expect the creature to have any life left, and using a tentacle pulls the captain down to the dark ocean floor. But he still survived, save for Jacob. Despite not having died, the captain is frustrated and orders them to follow the route back home. His ship is destroyed and that will prevent him from capturing the monster he hate the most. The captain calls Jacob into his room and thanks him for all his help and says that he is sure of one thing. Once he captures the Red Bluster, he will end his journey as captain and Jacob will take command in his place. He says he knows this since he found Jacob as a boy shipwrecked at sea. He knew that fate had given him a son and he would be captain of the inevitable. The ship is back home. Everyone celebrates the arrival of the most famous vessel of all for hunting the worst monsters. The girl Maisie is infiltrated among the population following everyone in the celebration of the return of the sailors. While everyone was singing and dancing, she appears at the bar window to greet Jacob and says that she is a big fan of his work. She says her parents were honorable hunters and fought for the great monarch vessel and Jacob likes the girl's brave attitude, but she starts to say that she ran away from the orphanage and is going to embark on their next trip to hunt monsters. The man obviously says that she won't, as the sea of monsters is not a place for children. The girl keeps insisting that she will ask the captain. So Jacob grabs her, puts the girl inside the wagon, and asks for the girl to be taken back to the orphanage. The next day, Captain Crow and his companions arrive at the royal palace to deliver the horn of the beast they eliminated on their last voyage. Despite the king finding a great reward, they didn't fulfill the main quest, to eliminate the Red Bluster. The king shows off the new colossal ship of the royal fleet called the Imperator. The navy will be the new responsible for the hunt, dispensing with the services of Captain Crow. Obviously Crow is furious, saying that the weapons on that ship were useless and the Navy General was a worthless being. The situation starts to get tense, but Jacob calms the mood and proposes a challenge between ships. A race for the hunt between the Inevitable and the Imperator. Whoever loses will be totally destroyed. The King accepts the competition and so they set out again to the ocean in search of the creature. Jacob reckons that Red must have a very thick hide and so they will need to use firebombs and long spears instead of arrows to destroy it. The captain warns the crew that they will enter waters never before sailed beyond the Dregmore Sea, which means the dangers are beyond human comprehension. With the information clarified, everyone decides to drink to celebrate the beginning of the journey, but there was something wrong with one of the barrels. When Jacob lifts him up, he finds Maisie inside. She infiltrated to go along on the trip. The girl is always as excited and knows the whole story of Captain Crow, leaving the man impressed with her bravery at such a young age. 
That's why Crow asks Sarah to accommodate the girl, the new crew member of the Inevitable. The woman hands the girl a knife for her defense and says that she must have absolute obedience or she would suffer serious consequences for not following the commands. It was already getting dark and the ship started its entry into the dreaded Dregmore Sea. Flares are thrown so they can attract the creature. Meanwhile, Maisie remains excited about her new blade so they can find Red and defeat him. The captain orders her to go to sleep immediately. The man knows the girl has the same gift as Jacob as a child, the instinct of a brave hunter. Suddenly, the deck starts to shake, it was the creature approaching. Everyone begins to prepare for combat, harpooners are on hand. When the birds come flying, then comes the attack. Jacob distributes the firebombs. Red is approaching the vessel and jumps out. The cannons fire at it, but the creature still charges at the front of the ship. The harpoons are launched attached to ropes and the monster starts pulling the ship at full speed. Despite the sails being opened, the monster continues to drag them around without stopping. Red is intelligent and begins to spin on its own axis, creating a vortex in the water, unbalancing the entire crew. Jacob warns the captain that the boat won't hold and they must undock from the monster, but Crow won't back down. Maisie sees the monster up close and all the sailors in danger. She takes her knife and starts cutting the ropes to free the vessel, but the captain gives a shout that if she does, she will be eliminated as punishment. Jacob runs to stop her, but realizes the girl was right and lets her finish the job. When the ropes break, the ship returns to its normal position, but Jacob and Maisie are thrown into the water, and they come face to face with the red bluster, which just recedes to the bottom of the ocean. The duo manage to emerge and climb into a small boat. While the captain threatens Jacob with a gun to hand over the little traitor, the monster appears from under them and devours the boat in just one bite. Once inside the monster, Jacob lights a lamp. They realize they are in Red's mouth. The man decides that he needs to explore the monster's interior. He ties a rope between himself and Maisie and begins scaling the creature's inner walls with his spear. The girl is pulled up and then realizes she has reached the monster's nostrils. Through them, the two can see the immensity of the ocean. The sailor notices that Red has surfaced in the water and is approaching an island. He says it will be time to eliminate the beast. But when he goes to untie Maisie's rope, he puts the spear on the inside walls of the animal's nose, which makes him sneeze violently and throw Jacob away. The man is tied to the rope in a kind of bizarre bungee jumping, until he holds onto a coconut tree with Red facing him face to face. The monster notices that there is still a rope on her nose and takes the girl away. And Maisie swings until she's caught in the monster's teeth with just one foot. Surprisingly though, Red Bluster is calm and does nothing, other than the fact that Jacob threw himself on the rope and was going to pierce the monster's eye. But Maisie stopped him by cutting his rope before he did something stupid. Jacob wouldn't give up, he rushes towards his spear for one more attack. Red uses its flipper to create a brutal tsunami on the beach, which prevents Jacob from taking any action as he is holding on to a coconut tree. The monster just decides that battle was boring and leaves. The pair of friends get into a nice discussion, after all, each one has a position on destroying the monster. But they hear the bizarre noises of creatures coming from the forest and decide they'd better seek shelter. A few hours later, at dusk Jacob is arriving in a heavy rain in a giant snail shell they found. The man found some fruit to eat. And once again, they end up arguing. Maisie isn't sure if killing that monster is right, after all he wasn't trying to hurt them. But Jacob isn't about to change his mind. Meanwhile in the inevitable, the captain is raging, believing that Jacob was killed by the monster. Sarah goes to him and shows that the ship is sinking, the water does not stop penetrating the hull. Captain Crow has a decision that goes against the hunter's code and leaves everyone in distress. He says he's going to find the witch. The next morning, Maisie wakes up to a small blue creature stealing some fruit at the campsite. The girl tries to approach gently, but the animal runs away and tries to hide. Until she approaches and manages to give him a treat. But when she picks him up, she ends up stepping on something that looks like an egg. Maisie was in the midst of several buried eggs. Jacob sees the girl with the monster in her hands, and extremely annoyed goes to her passing between the eggs. He flings the blue beast away and catches Maisie. But on the way back, he ends up unbalanced and stepping on several eggs. It all starts to break apart and the baby monsters start screaming non-stop. The two even try to escape to the beach, but are surrounded by the immense horde of creatures, which despite being harmless, attract the colossal mother to the place. The duo quickly pushes the sailboat into the water and Maisie hurls the last critter at the giant mother, and the creature stops chasing them. But there is not a minute of peace. The bizarre, gigantic crab grabs the boat with its claws and tries to swallow them with its mouth full of fangs. And he would have succeeded, if not for the red bluster showing up and scaring the crab with just his look. Jacob falls into the water with the raft, but Maisie is on the giant crustacean's back. Red gets into a fierce fight with the beast, 
making several lunges at the opposing monster. But the crab uses its pincers to hold the red monster's horn. Maisie doesn't think twice and runs into the creature's shell, jumping straight into one of her eyes. With that, Red breaks free, but the girl is thrown at full speed into the water and faints. Jacob throws his harpoon into one of the animal's paws and Red takes the opportunity to throw that thing away, showing all his fury. The sailor is desperate for the girl, but she appears on the surface being carried by the little blue creature. With everyone safe, they now have to solve the sinking boat problem. And so, Maisie calls Red and tries to explain to her using the fruits and the blue bug that they need help to get back home. And to everyone's surprise, the monster actually understands and lifts the boat on its head, carrying them safely towards the open sea. Now Jacob somehow tries to explain to Red which direction to go, but the monster doesn't understand anything. So Maisie also hangs on the rope and pretends she's flying. Her movement with her arms tells Red where to go, and thus, creates a way to guide her. At the same time, Captain Crow arrived at an island feared by all sailors. A dark place where he meets a terrifying sorceress named Gwen Batterby. The bizarre old woman takes Crow to a shed to show him her new lethal creation, the Hand of God. But the cost of getting it is giving up everything he had in his life. Still on top of Red, Jacob is trying to catch some fish with his spear, but his aim for small targets is terrible. Then the creature helps him by creating the vortex in the water, leaving the fish swimming in circles, including jumping into his hands. They got so many fish that the blue monster was crawling around because it was so fat. During the night, a strong storm approaches and to protect themselves from the violence of the colossal waves and the electrical discharges, they take shelter in the nostrils of red that descends to the bottom of the sea. Despite the magnificent creatures they are able to see down there, Jacob spots monster skeletons and ship wreckage, and realizes that for centuries that war caused only destruction on both sides. In the inevitable, the sailors feared the blood moon, as that was a sign that the witch was watching them from now on. The captain notices that a huge shoal is approaching, which means that Red is coming. Finally Jacob and Maisie arrived at Rump Pepper Island, but the girl is saddened to learn that the sailor will take her back to the orphanage, as they only have each other now. Having become friends with Red changed their lives, but she ends up letting it go, after all Jacob wouldn't understand. Upon reaching the beach, the boy thanks the red giant and awkwardly tries to say that from then on he would never hunt monsters across the oceans. While they were still saying goodbye, Red smells the approaching danger and climbs to the top of the hill and from there they all see the ship Imperator of the Royal Navy. Jacob tries to convince the monster not to attack, but when Red sees a sailor pointing his gun, he goes into a rage and charges at the army. Imperator opens fire on the creature. With that, Maisie ends up being thrown away by the impact of the explosions. Red not only capsizes the little boats, but splits the great Imperator in half. And just as she was about to devour the Navy General, she takes a warning shot given by Jacob right in the neck. The situation only gets worse, after all the monsters saw Maisie unconscious on the floor and became even more furious. Some flares are fired in the distance and Red spots Captain Crow's ship approaching. As the monster advances through the water, the sailors load the witch's lethal harpoon with the special poison. As soon as Red Bluster is a few feet away, Crow triggers the mechanism and slams the rocket harpoon into the creature's side. The monster takes terrible damage and is completely stunned and motionless right in front of the inevitable. Captain Crow climbs on the creature and says he will take it to the kingdom still alive. And so the sailors hold her in a huge net of ropes. The crew warns that a boat is approaching, and when Crow looks into his spyglass, he sees that Jacob and Maisie are still alive. The girl wakes up and sees that the captain is lecturing Jacob, saying that his behavior is unacceptable, they cannot declare a truce with a monster. Maisie suddenly jumps up, grabs her knife and tries to hit the captain, but is held back by Jacob. He puts her back in bed to sleep and goes to Crow's room to drink with him. Maisie gets a visit from Sarah during the night, and asks her to help her let go of Red, it's not fair what they're doing to her. The woman says that she knows it's not right, and is thoughtful about it, but doesn't decide to do anything right now. Inevitable approaches the kingdom. Maisie is desperately trying to get out of her room and ends up receiving an unexpected visitor, the blue monster climbs the hull of the ship and bites her bedroom window. Despite the happiness of seeing him, there was no time to waste. She looks through the various storybooks about the monsters, and sees that they have the same symbol of royalty, which means that the king himself created the lie that the creatures were dangerous. The girl grabs her things and starts to cross the ropes that tie red. With her knife she tries to cut the ropes, but that would take forever. The entire kingdom gathers to see the amazing red captured. The king declares that they have been the winners of the competition and Crow starts bragging while walking on Red, saying that he proved that hunters were the only ones capable of this feat. In the moment when the captain is going to stab his spear and finish the Red Bluster, 
Jacob interrupts him and asks him to hand over his spear. Crow says the man is a disgrace to him and draws his sword to face him. The two get into a fierce fight over Red. Captain takes advantage of the confrontation and throws Jacob into the water. Now would be the end of Red, but Sarah appears in front of Maisie and decides to help her cut the rope. With just one swipe of the sword, the bonds are broken and Red is free. But as she is still under the effects of the poison, she is stunned and collapses onto the vessel and part of the palace. As the naval fleet positions the cannons for the attack, Red tries to get up again, but only manages to collapse once more. From a distance, she sees that the captain is running to get a spear from the hands of some statues. She rushes at him at full speed and stands up in a rage to take a fatal bite, but just stops out of nowhere. It was Maisie who stepped in front of the captain. Jacob also approaches, takes Crow's spear and breaks it in two, symbolizing that the monster hunt is over for good. The king and the entire population are paralyzed in disbelief that this could be possible. The two go up in Red's head and Maisie tells the entire population that the books written by the kingdom were a lie. The beasts did not attack peasants, they were just stories invented by the monarchs who for generations taught everyone to hate monsters. And so this war was created. The king and queen are furious at the little girl's boldness and order the general to fire the cannons again. But the population screams that they must let Red go. The general decides to put away his sword and says he wants to understand why this war started by disobeying the monarch's orders. And so, Jacob and Maisie head towards the horizon on top of Red, the great red bluster of the seas. The two now live together, as father and daughter, in a different world where there is no longer hunting for sea creatures. Please like and subscribe.